Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna show you how to disassemble and reassemble an axle on a Classic Mini. So as this is a demonstration video only, what I've done is actually disassemble the axle prior to filming, cleaned everything up. I've taken the boots off, as you'll see. This just lets you see exactly uh, how it goes together a little bit better on camera. So what I've got here, this is the right hand side if you're sitting in the car uh, of an of a automatic Mini. So the difference between the automatic and the manual Mini in terms of axles is that the actual just axle thickness is a little different as well as the length. You'll notice on the right hand side, it would be the passenger in a left hand drive vehicle, uh, the axle is longer. On the driver's side, but the left hand side, uh, it's shorter, as you can see here. Um, so that's just one way to uh, know which one is the left and right. You'll also see that the splines are different. So there's uh, one section here that has long splines and one that has short splines. The one with the short splines goes to the outboard side. Uh, that's this side right here. Uh, that's the outer CV. And the one with the long splines goes to the pot joint, the inner CV here. So if you take the axle out of the car, you'll most likely be taking it out um, with the axle attached to the outer CV, which is this one right here. The inner pot joint usually will stay on the transmission uh, and then you'll be popping it out. Unfortunately, when Mini designed the subframes, they didn't make the hole in which this travels through big enough to actually pull the whole axle out as one. I don't know why, uh, but you have to disassemble it into two pieces. So once it's back on the bench, it'll look something like this. And we're just gonna go through it and I'll show you exactly how to pull this apart, um, where all the different components go and then how to put it back together. So first we're gonna start on the inboard side. This is sometimes called the pot joint, CV joint. So it's got this outer race here and this goes into the transmission. You can imagine the differentials right here. So if I pull this one out here, it should just come by hand. And you'll notice that there's all these ball bearings inside and it looks just like that. And then these ball bearings should just pop out. Now, this uh, particular cage here is uh, kind of worn out and these ball bearings are just kind of falling out. Usually you have to take a small screwdriver, which I'll get right here. And with a small screwdriver, you can actually just reach in and from the backside pop out the ball bearings. Make sure not to lose these, as you can put them in there. So if you just pop them out like this, You'll see they come out like that. Now usually again, this will all be covered in grease. So it's usually a good idea to clean everything off first, just so you can see what you're working with. And then once all the ball bearings are out, uh, this should be able to rotate like this. And what you do is you rotate it um, so that there's a little key and it indexes and then you're able to take it off and it'll go uh, onto the axle here. Now you'll notice that on this cage that holds the ball bearings, uh, it's got a chamfer on one edge and kind of a longer edge here. It doesn't go over top. You shouldn't be able to remove it from the axle. It has to go with this small edge facing the inboard side. So in order to get this off, what we need to do is take off this uh, inner race of um, the CV joint here. Now to take this off, you're gonna need to have the axle in a vise, nice and tight here, and using a punch, not on the uh, the surface here where the ball bearings ride, but on this edge right here. You wanna hit it with a hammer and this entire section here will just pop off. There's a circlip on the axle, as you can see. As you can see right here, this little circlip. That circlip is what retains this outboard piece. So if I just hit it with the hammer, you'll see it come off. There you go. That pops right off there. You can see the circlip right here. And then the cage can be removed. And that's the inboard side. Pretty much all you want to do from here, make sure everything is clean. You want to inspect the splines. So there's these splines here. These can sometimes rust because uh, water will get in there and will rust away. And actually what can happen is that they'll break off when you accelerate and you'll break the axle right on these little splines. But when you inspect it, with this piece on, you'll never be able to tell, so you need to pull it off. Look at the splines inside, look here, make sure the circlip's in place and in good condition. And then we can move to the outboard side. So what I'm gonna do is just flip it around in the vise, so that's facing this direction here. And I've got a pair of soft jaws on the 
vise here so that it doesn't eat into the axle. And the outboard CV is kind of one unit right here. So it's all, this is where the wheel attaches, the hub assembly's right here, big nut at the end of the CV. In order to take this off, same thing, we need to take a punch and from the inboard side, if you look right here, there's this little ring. You don't hit on this ring because as you can see here, this ring is attached to the axle. This is what stops the CV from going too far this way. So what we are gonna hit it from is this portion right here with this kind of um, star shape. So right from here, using a punch, and what I'll do is I'll grab a punch that is round, like flat like that, because you don't want to use one that will chip it. So then right from here, I'm just gonna hammer it and it'll come right off. I need a bigger hammer. So it might take quite a bit of force to get it off, but as long as you're hitting from the inboard side here, it'll pop off eventually. Uh, sometimes you need to go to a bigger hammer, as I did. Um, but that's pretty much it. The outboard side comes as one unit like this, and uh, it can be re-greased, but pretty much if it's all worn out, uh, you just buy a new version of this. And then we can pretty much start the uh, reassembly here. So what we're going to do first is make sure that everything's cleaned up. Uh, you want to inspect the splines on this side as well. Again, make sure the circlip's attached. Uh, clean everything off here really good so you can see any wear on them. You want to look at the ball bearings that come out um, here. And if there's any sort of pitting, you can see on this one there's a lot of pitting. Uh, this is not a good ball bearing. It's got to be perfectly shiny, almost mirror finish. Uh, if there's kind of like this, um, they won't tend to ride very really nice and uh, you'll have either juddering or your power won't be put down properly. So make sure to inspect everything really, really carefully. Uh, and then we can start the reassembly. So in order to reassemble, what we need to do is do it in the correct order. One thing to remember is that I don't have them on right now, but you have the boots that go over top, the grease boots. These need to go on first so that you can then uh, install all the components and pull it over because they don't go over top of this. It needs to go on the inboard side. So just keep that in mind. There's two different boots. Uh, this one here goes on the outboard side and then the pot joint type um, is a rounder type um, that goes over to the edge on this one here. So in order to reassemble, what we're gonna do uh, is pretty much the exact reverse uh, of what we did to take it apart. So I'm gonna start on the outboard side here with this one. You wanna just make sure that this is all aligned properly. If I was doing this for real, I would pack this all with fresh grease. Um, make sure the boot is over first. And then we can just line up the, the splines here and making sure that those are aligned properly. You can just lightly tap it back into place that and it should ride right against that ring that we were talking about earlier and make sure it's got nice uh, movement here and then we can flip around and do the other side so now we're gonna start on the inboard side of the axle this is the one with the pot joint so first step make sure that your boot is over the top uh, and then we can move on to the next step which is the cage now the cage has to go on like we talked about in a particular way. This is with the chamfer facing towards the outside of the axle. If you're ever curious on how it goes together, uh, you can take the kind of inner race here and put this one here. It should not be able to come off. Uh, the reverse is that it faces down this way. Um, and if you were to install it this way, not only would the ball bearing sit in the wrong spot, but this cage could come right off. Um, so we don't want that. So we're gonna install it this direction over top leave it there and then you can take this guy here again aligning to the splines making sure they're in place and with a little punch just on the edge I'm gonna tap it again making sure that it hits this collar here can't go any further and then you want to slide it over and rotate it so that it indexes with the slots here 
And then from this point, you can install the ball bearings. Now again, everything when we're assembling this normally would be covered in grease, uh, but I'm just doing it this way so you can see. So with those in place, you can take your ball bearings, make sure not to lose these, and they should pop into the cage like this. And you're gonna go around and install all the different ball bearings into the cage. Sometimes it takes a bit of force to pop them in. And once they're all popped in, then we can take the pop joint here and you can see there's the little indents where the ball bearings ride. I'm just gonna index those like that. And then usually it'll go in by hand. Sometimes you can give it a little tap with the hammer. And there you go. And then you wanna rotate it, make sure it's all fitting nice. From this point, uh, you can then fold the, uh, the dust boots over top of this here and either with a zap strap or with the supplied metal um, locking tabs, you can lock them on both the inboard and the outboard side. And there you have it, fully assembled axle. All right, it's pretty simple to put together as you can see. Uh, hopefully this video helped you out if you do need to disassemble or rebuild your axles. It's also a good time to announce that this will be the first installment of a new series we're doing where we're gonna do Tech Tip Tuesdays. Now we get a lot of emails and different questions and people messaging us on Instagram and YouTube of different tech related questions. We love getting those. So we figured the best way to do it is every week we're gonna pick one or two of them and we're gonna answer them in video format. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Uh, we really like to hear them and it gives us more content that we can bring to you. And speaking of content, we do all of these tech tip videos on our own time. And if you really enjoy them and they help you out, please consider subscribing to our Patreon page. Uh, the more Patreons we have, the more videos we're able to do and the more content we're able to bring to you. Again, thanks for watching. If you do like this video, like and subscribe below. It really helps us grow our channel and we'll see you on the next one.